Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of the Chicago federal trial and the Brooklyn appeal, federal Brooklyn appeal. Thank you so much for being here today, six. Um, this is August the 20th, 2022. I am recording this as of 6.48 a.m. Someone asked a question yesterday regarding immunity, and I did let them know that I will be going over that in a separate situation because yesterday was all about perjury. Now, when we say perjury, even though um, the courts allowed and the judges allowed immunity, the people who spoke up against Robert Sylvester Kelly, there will come a time that immunity could be questioned as a statement of fact against things that were withheld from the court, from the jury, that could have benefited the defense if it was allowed. So I'm going to read something to you from the appellate law firm, and they've been in business for many, many decades, and they look at the appeal processes in individual cases in federal trial on the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court of the United States has long had a mythic quality to it and justifiably so. The court has the ability to shape public policy for generations based on the interpretations of the justices sitting at the time a case is heard and short of a constitutional amendment, the court has the final say on constitutional matters as well as a strong hand in dictating how laws will be applied to the U.S. residents. Now, you know, it's United States of America versus Robert Sylvester Kelly. So in that situation, you have basically, and no disrespect to anyone, but if you have an outdated judge and laws have changed, 85 years sitting on the bench is a very long time. You have been set in your ways. You have a process that you use. You have a determination based upon, you know, how many people, get, you know, not guilty or guilty based upon the law in which you demand process out in the court what you take out of the court, all that's very in influential when a jury is deciding on, let me think, is this person guilty or not? Because they have to live with that decision for the rest of their lives. And many people can go mentally ill because one little inch of an iota of error that could have been, you know, maybe re-looked at was overlooked because everything was moving so fast and so over their head. So this is what they're saying as far as, you know, the immunity portion of the situation in Robert Sylvester Kelly's case. Now, I am not an attorney. I don't know how this is going to go down. I don't know how the second, uh, second court, second circuit will look at this. But I do believe that when you have perjury upon an immunity, there has to be a way that Bonjean can go through that and look through it a little deeper. So we'll see. She hasn't even done her, her cross-examination yet, so we will definitely see. But let's get back to this report here. It says, um, given the court's immense power, the proclamation pledge to take this all the way to the Supreme Court is a common refrain when a party receives an undesirable outcome in court or even leading up to a trial. But is it the case that through sheer force of will, a party can get the Supreme Court to hear his or her appeal? So let's look at that. That's a question. That's a good question. What do you guys think? Do you think that just because one level at the lower district, district court level said, no, they're going to go like going to ask grandma for the cookie. 
instead of, you know, accepting what it is and being done, taking it higher, higher, higher. Um, some people do that for no reason at all. I mean, sometimes people appeal civil cases because they didn't get the amount of money in which they were requesting. That's a waste of taxpayer money, time, and the court's time. Because the appellate court only look, they have to look at every case that comes through appeal status, but they th quickly throw out and, you know, they don't touch the lower levels on certain things. But I do and truly believe that Robert's case is totally different. The Supreme Court has jurisdiction only on federal matters. And when we're talking about immunity, I'm looking at the fact, could the Supreme Court or could the Second Circuit Court look at the immunity given and granted to these individuals and try to see if there could be an overturning of that trial and create a new trial under new law since the motion was struck down. Since the motion was struck down that Bonjean asked, can we please discredit or remove some of these individuals who have seen the docuseries? There are some people who haven't seen the docuseries. I'm one. And I know I'm not one of just one. I'm one of probably hundreds of thousands of people who didn't see it. So that is something that could have been partitioned in the prosecution using those points and factors and strengths to create an immunity to get someone to say whatever they wanted them to say to the jury to win the case. That is straight appeal, that straight appeal concept. That's what the appellate is for, for that situation right there. Because it's very, very discrediting. Now, state courts can generally most, but not all, state and federal claims. Federal courts are the exclusive forum for trademark, bankruptcy, and courts that hear claims on jurisdictional matters and um, things claims over $75,000. When a party brings a claim originally in the federal district court, then either party can appeal the outcome of the trial to a federal circuit court. And after the circuit court rules, either party can appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, although the Supreme Court has discretion on whether to hear it. They can decide, I can, I'll can. i listen to this. This is something that has been followed because of the way that normally at the bottom, people are, uh, judges are supposed to be, you know, respectful to the law and fair and just. But when those situations come about that are not just and not fair, then it needs to be appealed. That's just common sense. But when a claim is originally brought in a state court, the appeals process will be different. First, the trial outcome can be appealed to a, to a, a, a higher court. Now, this is federal. Um, so we're not going to talk about the state at all because that has nothing to do with the federal. So the pre Supreme Court has discretion to hear cases or not. Given the fact that the Supreme Court sits at the head of 13 federal circuit courts and additionally assesses requests for appeals from 50 state court systems, it should come as no surprise that the court hears only a small fraction of the appeals that are made to it. In most cases, the court has discretion in choosing what cases it wants to hear, and it does not need to provide a reason for denying the reason or the request to hear the appeal, which is called denying certiari. Generally, though patterns do emerge in what the court chooses to hear or not, the Supreme Court often chooses to hear cases where there is a disagreement among federal appeals courts on a question of federal law or where, where the members of the court want to expound upon a question of law that they feel has been unaddressed and or unresolved by previous rulings. And this is where 
Bonjean is going to really, really shine her best because she's going to be able to, you know, look at what has not been addressed, you know? Um, and the sovereign ju jurisdictional immunity for all other suits against a single state, state sovereign immunity, you know, all that is more or less used for qualifying, what is it called here? Qualifying immunity. And that's for governmental officials not to be, you know, uh, that's what it was supposed to be for. For government officials and high statuses not to be criminally charged, you know, like a regular U.S. person. I don't know why that is. However, it means that you must be a qualified immunity jurisdictional issue. You must have that statement of, oh, well, I was a representative of Congress or, you know, uh, government. And this happened while I was sitting, you know, on congressional seat and, you know, something happened. Like you take President uh, Clinton and the situation with uh, that Monica Lewinsky. Okay, we can use that. That right there was qualifying immunity. There are certain things that, you know, he was given immunity on. Even Donald Trump, same thing. Some immunity forces are definitely used to support the privacy of the person of higher status. And I don't know why it's not used in, in you know, celebrity status as well, because so many people know him. So many people know Robert. And yeah. Yeah. So immunity is exemption from a legal requirement, prosecution or penalty granted by statute of government authorities. So the government is allowing them to, you know, but immunity is an exemption. Um, the main types of immunity are witness immunity, public officials immunity from liability, sovereign immunity and diplomatic immunity. The factors considered when granting immunity from prosecution for witnesses include the seriousness of the offense, reliability, and involvement in criminal activity. So me, myself, personally, I do not see the strength in the reliability of the testimony. That testimony is not as reliable as it would normally be in a factor of seriousness of the offense. Now, it may look like that to the prosecution because they're trying to create another a guilty verdict. But on the onset of it, they're doing it based upon covering up or buffering or blanketing the law. They're blanketing the law that should be presented in trial if this were a regular everyday human being. So... This witness or public official um, protection from liability, that's what I'm talking about with the congressionals and the, and the presidents and different things like that. Witness immunity from prosecution is granted to someone in exchange for information or testimony in a criminal trial. Well, this for Jane should not be in effect because she's already, she's already had her day in court or not had her day in court. So what you don't say in court during a proceeding is just as strong as what you do say in a court in the proceeding during that time um, of initiation of information. So being withholding is, is a criminal offense in the U.S. in any other situation. But um, then you have sovereign or governmental immunity protects a sovereign state or agency from lawsuits without their consent. So you can still, you can still sue um, civilly or liably. Like I know my state is a sovereign state, so I can't sue my council people. I can't sue anybody on the federal level of this state. And I don't know why that's there because that just only allows the individual to do with 
the community what it wants to do, even though a person is literally struggling and in, you know, in some illegal aspects, possibly. But I guess there's always ways around and loopholes around the law when you need it. And then the fourth is diplomatic immunity granted to diplomatic personnel exempt from the laws of a foreign jurisdiction. So um, we're going to go to a few comments that I received from my Kelly Nation supporters here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. I'm going to start with the Jane prosecution perjury um, concept that we had shared on the video, the very last video on the segment. Anne says, Godfather is like your dad. So they like, they're like family. So, okay, I asked the question of what is so significant about this whole Godfather situation? Like, why is it that it's so important to call you know, Robert daddy or Godfather or father, or I mean, what was the significance in that? And so she said that it's because I guess it's, and then I go in to look at, you know, how my kids' godparents are um, in what they do. They help guide them, direct them. They're there for my children when I'm unable to deal with certain situations I have no experience over or something like that. So um, in this case, in Robert's case, I mean, I think that, you know, again, I believe that the parents gave permission. They, they signed over their children. They signed her over. Um, I don't know. Yvette, glory be to God and praise in the name of Jesus. Thanks. Miss Mel, I don't know who Miss Mel is, but I'm not Miss Mel. <laughs> But okay, maybe she has Mel in her energy. And so we thank Miss Mel for educating people on law and lawlessness. Common sense isn't common for some people. Injustice isn't justice. The irresponsible journalism and biased media is too dangerous, especially with technology society. And that was true, Eva. Thank you so, so much for that input, because you're absolutely right. You know, um, it's just like some people who are educated, they use that education for uh, negative reasons and negative purposes. You know, what you don't know can hurt you. And I know in the field of, you know, YouTube, as far as the culture of people who listen to R. Kelly Appeal TV for the purposes of getting to know the information and getting to really, really get deeper into what is going on. The reason for, you know, the information is to make sure that you are not in some of these debates and arguments that you hear on YouTube and you can be one of the observers in the, in the background saying, wow, <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Because I just read the law. I just heard the law on this. That's That may not be correct. And even working with my Kelly Nation supporters here, what happens is I learn law too. Because there are certain things, especially some of my, my great commenters, that's very wise, that's very intelligent, that's very, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are very connected to the law. And interpretation of the law is the most important thing when discussing law. So I haven't been in a college room setting where a professor can say, no, you interpreted the law the wrong way there. So this is what is happening now where my students, you know, this is one of my courses I'm doing right now that I will upload to YouTube for the purpose of, you know, um, information. But the majority of my, my students are interning to promote law to where we all understand it as true because they're still in the classrooms. 
and they're getting that education. So when they come back to me and say, you interpreted the law the wrong way in that instance, then I can go back and say, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So that's what I'm learning. And this guy here, 10 Hebrew ex executioners, um, he's one that basically keeps me on the up and up with the lot of the law. So 10 Hebrew, thank you. He says, child pornography <laughs> means he published what he recorded. He hasn't published anything. Um, yeah, because when you publish something, you make it open to the community. Um, he hasn't published a damn thing. The witnesses and others disseminated that child p or nography, and thus, um, and those who don't remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Thank you. Anne says this lady is telling lies. Kathy says, Jane's testimony sounds staged, and in all honesty, I don't believe R. Kelly did anything with her. He just isn't that naive. 14 years old, come on, give me a break. So what is so vital about a 14-year-old? What is so crucial between a, a young woman who is 14 and a woman who is 19, who is legal? You know, that's one of the oldest, how can I put it, myths, I believe, in the world where they say, oh, the men just want the youngest thing out available. Yeah, there are some creepy crawly creeps around here. I know. I was 17 years old walking home from school and ended up having a personal relationship that lasted over 30 years with a, with a person who was stalking high school period point blank period point blank i'm gonna call it what it is if it's a duck it's a duck and it quacks as a duck and i didn't realize until i'm 20 21 22 in the midst of the relationship that this man lied about his age you know how some people can look very young look like you just got out of college your damn or high school your damn self maybe 21 22 23 and you looking 30 or you are physically 30. So, I mean, I get it. I was one of the ones that got caught up in that trap, you know? And my, 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 my mom was one that says, you know, it's cool. You know, he got some money. He got a whole business. Go ahead and see what happens. Yeah. And then I go see what happens because my mother had, you know, and, and I'm not going to lie for my mother. Bless her soul. But she had another agenda for me. She felt that a man was going to create my destiny for me. She wasn't believing in the fact that I could create my own destiny for myself. So when you know, when an alcoholic can only teach you how to use alcohol when you're depressed. So when you go to a person who does not really know, and many of us as parents have made a lot of mistakes. So I go out there and I figure this thing out for myself. And before you know it, I'm pregnant. And before you know it, he's giving me $5,000 because what? <laughs> if he has money, he doesn't want to be involved in this type of situation. He just wants to look at the situation from a standpoint. You're a trophy on the shelf. I'll pull you down when I need to take you to an event. That was devastating for me. But I didn't take him to court for it because I know I was partially 50% equally at fault. Number one, I didn't do my research. Number two, I ended up getting emotionally attached. Number three, he wasn't about that life. I should have paid attention when I was making the phone calls and he wasn't answering them until he chose to call me. And when he chose to call me, that's when I jumped up. Yay! He called. I knew he loved me. No, that was not the naivety of being young. Okay. So this thing has been going on for ages and ages and ages and ages. Not to say that at one point, some, someone or something must stop the, the, the trick. 
I'm just so sad that it happened to be R. Kelly to have to be the one to stop the trick. You know, um, I can't wait to see what happens with Ghislaine Maxwell's appeal. Um, amazing. <clears throat> That's something we need to keep in contact with. And asks, where are the babies? Young girls get pregnant. Absolutely. And if you haven't sex that many times, I mean hundreds to the point where, oh God, it's a sitcom, according to Jim Derogatis. It's a sitcom. So technically that means that you're having intimate relations for 30 minutes. I'm sure you're not using a condom. Can a condom even last that long? Not sure. But just some things that I want to put on your mind so that you can think about them when we're going over this and maybe looking at some of the things that the jurors may be thinking in the back of their mind that can prevent them from saying guilty. All right, so here's another comment. And this was on the video of the opening argument and how social media is very powerful. So for those who have watched that video, the comments go, yeah, her reasons was for section eight, trips and money. I was like, really? And no jail time for her and the mother. So we were talking about immunity here. Um, now Alma asked, do you think at closing argument, Bonjean will tell the jury what Angel Cruz got Jane, why she got Jane to flip over a period of many, many months with false information after 22 years of loving Kells as a godfather. Why do you think that Angel Cruel um, got her to testify against him? And, and there should be some answers coming up soon that I know Bonjean is going to be paying attention to. So when we had the video of the Jim Dare Goddess situation about painting the pictures of lies to the media, hoping to get a jury to fall for it, uh, the comments, I don't know, one of my commenters shut the comments off, but I would love to have seen what that was about. Um, it seems like it's just some things they're making up as they go along. What do you guys feel about the CBS interview that came with Jer Derek Goddess talking about, you know, what he's gone through over the years trying to report this and not being heard? Um, creating the book opposite, a case to, a case against Star Kelly, soulless. You know, so we went through that. And then the Void Dyer and the Dark Side opening statements of prosecution. There was a lot of comments on that. Um, and Michelle asked the question, didn't R. Kelly get acquitted in 2008? Then why is he on trial for the same thing? Isn't that considered double jeopardy or maybe just in other countries? Very good question. I do believe it is. Um, she says, I just don't understand all this legal stuff. Maybe it's not for me to understand. I'll just wait to find out the verdict because I'm hearing too many people reporting on our Kelly case and everyone isn't, isn't on the same page. Absolutely. When you see that somebody here is saying this and then somebody is over there saying that, it's just public opinion again. If you're not running off of the facts and the details that is consistent to what's going on in that courtroom, you're going to get something far over left field. And it, it, it is going to drive you, you know, mentally, like it's going to make you upset because you're going to be like, what is the truth? So then your best bet is Michelle to pull away and to make sure that, you know, you are in a position where you're understanding for yourself based upon the testimonies and what is going on with the jury verdict. So somewhere in between someone is giving his fans wrong information. 
So at this point, people don't know who and what to believe. I tried asking certain people, hey, are you present in the courtroom to get what's going on firsthand? So when you bring it back to the people, we know it's the truth. Like on these R. Kelly Facebook groups, you have too many people bringing back information and the fans don't know who to believe. Maybe if these people let us know who they are and what part they play in his case, we will understand better. But hey, it is what it is. I get it, Michelle. And that is a very educational way to look at this scenario. But I guarantee you one thing, and this is something you could take to the bank in cash. The truth will come out in time. So being patient is one of the biggest virtues that social media does not uh, use as a moral ethical principle. So you have to do it within yourself. You have to know when enough is enough. And Fancy Face, my girl, oh, and she had a really good um, post and I'm going to read that in a minute. Keep the faith, Kelly, because I am going to do so. Jackie says they need to stop with the bull crap and let that man go. If they do that, then their ego will be struck. They will know that the world will always remember prosecution as having been the, the one who bullied the situation. And when everybody realized they were the bully, they decided to become more of a bully to keep up the whole facade. So that's really not going to happen. Michelle, at least four of the jurors seen and heard about the documentary. So this isn't going to make a difference now. Since the judge chose to allow those jurors to sit in that jury box, I just don't see how any of this would be carried out. Right. It's, it's not because if they're looking to see you know, an outcome based upon how they're pushing and bullying the jury. That just leads again to an appeal. Wait and see. Just remember, it's two sides to the story. I think I read that one. So yes, yes, free R. Kelly. And then someone asked, what is the exact dark side to the story? I mean, what are they saying here? Will the jury believe it though? You know, will the jury believe this? And this is the fear that they're trying to put into the mindsets of those who are following the story. They want us to think so negative of him. And Fancy, Fancy says, hello, R. Kelly Appeal TV. Wow, I must say you preach tonight. Oh God, I don't want to. <laughs> very touching everything you said was a blessing to my ears thank god you pick up on that game she was trying to run on you now about robert sylvester kelly that advice you gave or said to him it really did touch my soul to the point that i got teary eyed while at work it really was a blessing but i just pray that he keeps the faith and put all his trust in god the most high and i believe that god has and will bring him out of this with a lesson learned god has a way of getting our attention we might not like it but we will learn from our mistakes robert sylvester kelly trusted too many people and they turned on him and none of those people had his best interest at heart so i'm gonna just keep praying for him that he comes out of this with his head held up high giving god all the praise lord i ask that you bless robert sylvester kelly not only with this case but with his health mind and body and soul whatever he is feeling today tomorrow or days to come i ask that you take it all away give him a peaceful mind let him know that he is loved and missed by all of his real fans in your name i pray amen to be to god be the glory thank you fancy and i did pin that because it was something that we all need to hear when we come and look for hope in the middle of the day when everything is looking horrific on that top media channel, you can come on the back burner here to R. Kelly Appeal TV and get that piece of hope because you know I'm going to connect it to something hopeful. And it's not for the sake of making someone just feel better, but it's just truly and honestly the way that I enter. 
Um, people spend a lot of time trying to scam people. Please be careful. Some of these people are willing to take a chance to go to prison. So these people don't really care about anything else. And as far as the scammer video we did this week, Facebook tried to send Rodney um, and say that they can process $1,500 for $30. He reported it. And um, yeah, Tiffany Cage was a scammer. So that's what we got to do too. We got to start um, calling out and holding accountable these individuals who don't understand that the way that they're going about things is totally wrong. You know, totally wrong. So that's what I wanted to just update you guys on. And just to give you some hope, there's really nothing to report today. Um, maybe so. Let me see if there's anything on the on the docket here. Um, there's really nothing to report. It probably won't be until there's something um, until it's something that is on the docket specific. Let me see. It might be because it moved up. Hold on. Let me see here. Yeah, it's still the same thing. August 16th. Um, order. And Void Dyer begins. So we um, have went over the Void Dyer already. So here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, we are up to date. I mean, other than, oh, I did get some news <laughs> that Andrea Kelly, um, that Andrea Kelly may have been part of the sex acts with this goddaughter. Um, and I don't know where it was at, but it has something to do with R. Kelly, with R. Kelly and his wife at the time. And according to what Jim Deere Goddess or some other script that CNN said, some article, it said that they didn't know, they did not, the parents of Jane didn't know that she was in the studio with Robert by herself. They thought that she was in the house with Andrea and Robert. Would that have been more to testify here? You know, did Jane really and truly say, and is it true? That Andrea Kelly could have been involved in it. You know, she do a lot of bumping and grinding still to this day. So I think it's part of her mentality as well. But she called it studio dancing. You should look at the one out there with her dancing. I mean, for her old heads. Sometimes there just comes a time where we just have to, you know, Turn, throw in the towel and just say, that ain't for me at this age. But some people feel that it is going above and beyond all that if your body can do this, that, and the other. And then you got people hating because they can't do it. Well, God bless you. If you can do that, great. God bless you. But there comes a time where you just don't look as mature as you should be looking, you know. And I think that has a mindset of the age being right there at that time when she was still on the tour bus with the Bible in her hand waiting for R. Kelly to announce that she was going to be his wife. It was all there set in a manifest. I don't know if Kelly manifested that for himself or if someone who knew him manifested it for him. But however it is, I just want you to just pay attention, observe, and weigh it out. Meditate on it. See if it makes sense. And if it don't make sense, it didn't make dollars. 
you know? I know it's the opposite way. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. But that's what the situation of this whole concept is. If it didn't make dollars, it didn't make sense. So we can believe a lie as long as we make money. But if you flip that around, if it don't make sense, it didn't make dollars. And that's the reason why it is what it is. So when you look at things and see that it is all upside down, topsy-turvy, it's because it didn't make dollars. So it didn't make sense. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing to this podcast. Please share this information with someone, maybe in your inbox. You don't even have to share it out and about for those who may um, feel that, you know, when you see something scrolling through on Facebook or something, please let this video be known to those who really want to get an understanding of Robert Sylvester Kelly. Now, for my students, I really enjoyed reading all of the essays that were brought out. They were brought out definitely in great concepts. So I'm going to have a membership um, group reading for that, for members only. So um, that those are my students. That's my student area. Um, but then I'm also doing that as a private video for them as members. All right. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate and value every comment, every, everything that anyone has to say on the input of our Kelly Appeal TV, because we're making the criminal justice system better because we are talking and communicating on this level. You have a blessed weekend and we will see you next time.